Kate Blanchett really is one of Hollywood's biggest stars. She is widely respected for her ability to fully embody a character, vividly bringing them to life. She was passionate about films from an early age, entertaining friends with performances while at uni studying economics and art history. Feeling unfulfilled, she tried out for NIDA, and of course, she got in. Following her training, she joined the Sydney Theatre Company, where she quickly made a name for herself on the stage. I really don't think I could have done what I'm doing at the moment unless I'd had the background I'd had in theatre, working with the people that I have. Um, I feel I've got a very solid base and a, and a lot of things to, to, to draw on. Kate was also making a name for herself in the TV series Heartland and Border Town, and on the big screen in Paradise Road, Thank God He Met Lizzie and Oscar and Lucinda. But it was her regal and mesmerising performance as a monarch in Elizabeth that proved she was a star on the rise. It also earned her a BAFTA, a Golden Globe and her first Oscar nomination. Uh, I think there's probably a lot more focus on the, the choices that you make subsequent to be being nominated for an Oscar, but it's work just goes on. And Kate did keep working. First, she showed off her comic skills in Pushing Tin. Then, with an ideal husband, she got back into period costume. Her personal life was also going well. Kate married writer and director Andrew Upton shortly before she began work on The Talented Mr Ripley. I'll tell you a secret. I had a ball. Making, I know acting is meant to be really hard, and, um, but I had a ball. I mean, I was, in, I was in Rome in summer, I was in love, I was staying in an extraordinary apartment, I was being directed by Anthony Magella. I mean, it doesn't... It's a pretty great job. Always up for a challenge, Kate continued to play a diverse range of characters, easily jumping from Elf Queen in The Lord of the Rings to crusading journalist in Veronica Guerin to quirky writer in The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. One of her greatest performances was as the feisty screen legend Catherine Hepburn in The Aviator, which led to her first Oscar win. Coming from the Academy, it means an enormous amount. Um, you know, I said that they're so intimately, not only intimately acquainted with her work, but so many of the people in the Academy actually worked with her or knew her. There was no shortage of opportunities for Kate. She starred in films like Babel, The Good German, Notes on a Scandal, I'm Not There, and Elizabeth the Golden Age. Refusing to rest on her laurels, Kate's always pushing herself out of her comfort zone to create a unique character in each and every film she does. The reason to, to be an actor really is to continue to grow as a human being. And so you don't want to diminish a character's experience and and um, denude them of all their kind of wild, extraordinary experiences if you're constantly relating it back to the death of your dog. For Kate, the chance to play the baddie in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was irresistible. I think being bad is, is, very, um, is very attractive. An out and out baddie is incredibly attractive. Um, I think it's because you're, you're pushing moral boundaries. Kate Blanchett is an amazing talent and a great ambassador for Australia. And she's certainly not your average Hollywood starlet. She, to a certain degree, shuns the spotlight. She chooses her roles based on artistic merit. And I think her poise, talent and versatility will ensure that she is a Hollywood star for years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.